So, for the last five minutes or so, we'll ask Chi has the monstrous task of summarizing everything for us. Yes. The title of that is called Abhadasamka Zen. Okay, you can see this one is another version, a smaller version of the micro and macro view a scale from Dr. Chan just represented. On the macrocosmic scale, you can see we go from self, we go up to family, community, nationality, and so on. And if you go to the microscopic view or scale, you can see that we go from self, we go in biology, chemistry, and physics. You already know this too, that if you look at the whole picture, you can see that we are all interconnected. Therefore, our thought, our actions, our characters, our habits, and our life will reflect and affect our universe. For example, we all travel for pleasure. When we go on that airplane or go on a bus and drive our car, we already has a small contribution of the greenhouse gas to our universe, to our society. That will affect both macrocosmically and microscopically. Therefore, our actions will leave an imprint to the, our society and to our many generations to come. Uh, you can see wars will leave a very negative imprint to our society and the opposite is the AWE or other spiritual school out there will leave a positive imprint to our society. Now you can see another scale down at the bottom there. It's the electromagnetic spectrum. And this scale you're going to see and know about this one in the next few lectures. And this is another version of... Uh, microscopic and macrocosmic scale. So. The central thesis of the last slide is it's a continuum. Our reality is a continuum of dimension. Let us not confine ourselves silo with only in a single dimension. Let's not live our life in a single dimension. Because even if we try to, we can't because it's a continuum. When we talk about Avatam Saka Zen, we'd like to give you the definitions. Actually, Dr. Lo already gave us the definition about Zen. But anyway, this is the, another definition. Avatam Saka is the main Mahayana Sutra. And underscore number 65, the Sutra introduced a Zen exercise of counting increasingly large numbers to expand the units of measuring. And then, as we talk about already, is the experimental awareness. It uh, emphasizes the Dharma practice to attain the Samadhi and enlightenment. We already talked about Zen, so I'm not going to talk more about this anymore. And we're going to the next one. This is AWE method. Last week, we asked you to count the number uh, with us and to pay attention how you feel when you count this number. Now this week we're going to tell you the benefit of counting number and we'll tell you why we had to count the number. So the first benefit is the counting number is just a mental exercise. It helps to measure the emotional resistance. It will help us to monitor our emotional resistance. Last week when you count the number and you keep counting the number, the counting number helped you to realize that your mind gets bored so quick, so fast. And it's just a simple task. It's a very long but simple task and then you get bored very quickly. So you can see that your mind is always on the go, go, and then think things a lot and it's just like a monkey mind. Your mind likes to challenging uh, task, and it's like exciting, you know, work on the exciting task. It doesn't want a simple thing. 
from this counting number is help you to know and understand how your mind works. And the second benefit is this counting number is just another approach, another method. When you're talking about Zen and you meditate, the very common method is they ask you to count your breath. So this is just another method. But instead of counting the breath, you're counting the number. However, counting the breath is very simpler task than counting number. And we already gave you a very exciting task. You know, it's challenging. You wrap with the number and then you, it's more exciting. And even though you still get bored so quickly, never mind you sitting there and you count your breath. So what make us resist the counting? Obviously, all we know that is our ego. Our ego doesn't want to count. It's so boring. Now, let's say when you count to the koti koti, the patna, and all of the unfamiliar words. First of all, you're not familiar with this word. You don't understand what it means. And it's if you don't even know how to pronounce it. So that's why the information definitely fits into your silo. Therefore, you reject the idea. You doesn't want to count anymore. You resist the counting. It doesn't fit into my silo. What is the meaning of this? It's no meaning. It's, it's useless. Okay, the third benefit. In order for us to keep counting to the end, you have to focus. If you try to remember last week, when you count, let's say some people count for two seconds and they start to thinking, what's for dinner tonight? And another thought coming and then, you know. But some people can count another five or ten seconds and then another, you know, they're thinking of something else. So this counting number helps to measure your attention span. Some people have count until like another 10, 15 seconds, but some people just a two second and then, oh, what is this? So when you, if you're not focused, when you keep counting and then if you think about something else and you get back into and you just lost, it takes you for a while to keep up with us again. So this is another benefit that you have to be focused. And when you focus something that you practice, this is Zen practice. The last one, the life force, is, life force is identified as Zen serenity power. Now by counting, and you counting the larger and the larger number, by doing that, your mind starts to open. And when your mind opens, you can break to many thinking boxes. If you can count the number until to the end of the exercise means your life force is very strong, very high. So when you have a high, um, strong life force, your mind will open. Your mind has room and space to absorb the vast amount of information and the Dharma teaching. If you don't have an open mind, nothing will go into your mind. So at the end, AWE throw into the finite and the infinite. It is the ultimate contradiction. It's the, the most opposite pair that you can think of. So by introduce the ultimate contradiction, therefore the uncountable number, unmeasurable, unspeakable number will become countable measurable and speakable number. So that's how you transcend the duality. And again, duality is just a conflict. It's just the opposite. Duality is created by us based on our education, our background, our uh, cultures, and our education, and our profession. So if you have an open mind, you have no ego, you have a strong life force, you can break through this boundary, this thinking boxes, then you will have no limits, no boundary, no opposite, no conflict, and no discrimination, and no suffering. So therefore, 
we can appreciate, you know, everyone. We can appreciate all the beings, our mother natures, and our universe. Okay, the third point is it demonstrates the scientific relevance of macroscopic and microscopic visualization. This one, Dr. Chan just gave a whole lecture about this thing. Point number one and number two, when you know yourself very well, know your brain, your mind very well, then you are ready to explore the outer world. So the microscopic and the macroscopic view, the dimension, it just help us to explore all the dimensions, all the reality dimension out there. And it help us to relate and appreciate our inner world at the microscopic view, and we appreciate the outer world at macroscopic view. And now you can see that we are part of the whole universe, and we are interconnected. Therefore, you can see the whole scale is just a continuum of dimensions. Like uh, Dr. Law already mentioned that we go from metaphysic concept, we go to the physical concept. Now, you know Avatam Saka's Sutra is very difficult to understand. The teaching is very subtle. That's why AWE tried to introduce the modules. And Tammy already talked about those two, three modules. The child development, the one dimension mindset, and the second dimension mindset. This module helped us to fill in the gap to explain the sutra so it become from the esoteric teaching with the AWE method, it become exoteric teaching. So that's about for this slide. It's very simple. Okay, I'd like to review, uh, give you the whole picture review from the first lectures. The first lectures is on holistic health. And we focus on spirituality. We try to discover the mystery of life by using all the scientific facts and so you can see the meaning of life. When we introduce learning skill, first the definition will help us to have a clear communication and we gave us the AAEECC to help you to overcome your ego. Then we introduce you the mindset. The mindset is again is the master key and we use a counting number is the tool to help us to open our mind, to get to know our mind so we can transcend the duality. Then Dr. Chen just talked about the macrocosmic and the microscopic scale. Then this one we gave you the whole universal view. It's the wholeness, it's the oneness, and we have no ego. When we can relate to the whole scale, then we don't have your ego. It's egoless. So Avatam Saka Zen, all of this lecture that we've been giving it to you, it helps you to get to know your mind, help us to overcome our obstacles and our ego, so we can help us to get the samadhi and to understand the wisdom. So every lecture in first year, we gave you just a little bit of a piece of puzzle. And each puzzle, this lecture is um, very important and very critical for you to put those puzzles into a picture. And eventually, it will reveal the whole picture, and that will be a meaningful of life. You will see the meaning of life when we complete our curriculums. And that's about it. Just a quick review. Do you have any questions?